Hey guys, welcome to Digital Srini channel on YouTube. And in this short video, I'm gonna talk about binary cross entropy using plain English mostly and a very little bit of math. And uh, the reason I'm talking about this is binary cross entropy, of course, we use this as a loss function for uh, classification purposes and even in semantic segmentation. And uh, of course, even in generative adversarial networks, if you actually look at your discriminators or generators, this is a quite common loss function that we use. So it only makes sense for us to understand this a little bit better. So let's jump in. And before doing that, a quick request, whenever you watch any of my videos, for example, in this case, this is one of the recent videos, go ahead and hit the like button if you really like it. And that tells me what type of content you're actually into. So I'll put more effort into liking those. And, uh, uh, and also the style or the way that I cover these topics. So feedback is very important. Also do subscribe to my channel so you get notified. And recent edition, if you are feeling extra generous, okay, go ahead and hit the thanks and then just purchase any of the stickers. So that adds extra support to this channel. And again, please remember that with this channel, I am also supporting a couple of charities that I would like to support. So it's all for a good cause. Okay, now let's jump in and continue our discussion. So first of all, what is entropy? If you come from physics background, or if you have taken the basic physics courses, you probably heard the term entropy. But the English definition, clear English definition, is, uh, well, if you look up uh, the dictionary, there are two, there is a physics definition and there is basically an English definition. Both of them refer to the degree of disorder or randomness, yeah? It's a lack of order. So remember this. And if you look at the mathematical definition of this, or this is basically a uh, physics definition from thermodynamics that's uh, uh, given in the form of uh, an equation right there. So your entropy, often referred to as S, equals to negative K, which is the Boltzmann constant, times P log P. Again, I, I promise not to use a lot of math, but uh, again, I'm just showing you the equation so you can relate to them once we get to that stage in a, uh, in a few minutes. Okay, now moving on, what is cross entropy? Okay, we understand entropy, measure of disorder. A cross entropy is very similar. This comes from the game theory, I believe, uh, or information theory, sorry. And cross entropy is a measure of the difference between two probability distributions. If we have one probability dif distribution that has certain shape, you have another probability distribution, are they really two different, uh, uh, completely different? So you may, if you worked in this area before, you probably heard of KL divergence which is also something that you use to compare these two, but, but cross entropy is like that, but it's not exactly that. So let's focus on cross entropy in this video. So if you look at the equation for cross entropy, it is again uh, negative of the summation, Ti log Si, Si is the probability. And in fact, if you look at the similarity with the entropy, you see the equations are very similar. That's because this is based on the, the concept of entropy. And binary cross entropy basically is take your cross entropy and put your C equals to two. Number of classes is equal to two, right? That's our binary. And then you expand this, then this is T1 log S1 and T2 log S2. Or one, well, if it is binary, then if it is the first one has a probability of S, the second one is one minus S, right? So that's exactly where you get this. So this is binary cross entropy. Well, so far so good. Just look at the equations, right? Now let's look at the basics, the concept. So let's understand this by using a simple uh, binary classification. Okay, I have a bunch of images of cats and dogs. I wanna classify them as cats and dogs. So first of all, based on the feature, like if you wanna classify, when you look at these images, you are using some of the features in your mind. Hey, this one looks like a cat because it has certain side of, uh, type of whiskers and it has it looks a certain way because we are trained to identify those features. When you look at dogs, pretty much similar. Okay, you have uh, you know certain type of facial features, so you do that. So let's say you have whatever that feature is that describes a dog or a cat. You quantify that feature. This is what machine learning is. If you do handcrafted features, you extract the features like edge detection or texture or so on. If you use deep learning, the features are learned during the training process. Either way, you get a feature that you use to classify. So what are those features? Yeah. So first, let's say my cat label is zero, my dog label equals to one, and you have a feature, whatever that feature is, you're quantifying it, and that feature goes from minus two to two. It can be minus 1,000 to 1,000 based on the feature. 
right? So we are, again, the whole point is you have some, some data and you're extracting features and then you're using a classifier. This is what our machine learning is. And in this case, our data is pictures or images of cats and dogs. We are extracting features and then we apply a classifier. Step one, extract features. Yeah, let's not get into what features and all that. That's a different discussion. So let's say our features go from minus two to two. And if it is a uh, something that looks definitely like a cat, let's say it's more towards the left hand side. And as it uh, uh, goes towards the dog, you get more dog like features on the right hand side. So let's say, OK, another image. And then this image, this is actually a dog, but that looks kind of like a cat. So the features that we extracted uh, are giving us a value of minus 0.5. So instead of classifying this as a dog, it got misclassified as a cat. That happens, right? And then you have a couple of uh, cat and then a dog that gets uh, rightly uh, identified. And then you have a cat that has a lot of dog-like features. So this gets misclassified as a dog. Again, this is a cat, so it must belong somewhere over here, but the features are more dog-like. So let's say it's here and then all the way to the right when you go there, you have a dog right here. Well, why are we looking at this? If you actually look at the features and corresponding true labels, you have zero, zero, because these two are cats, and then one, because this is actually a dog, but misclassified as a cat. So the actual label, these are true labels, is one for this image, and then comes zero, and then uh, uh, comes one because this is a dog, right? 0 0.5. And then comes this image that kind of looks like a dog, but that's a cat. And that is true label is zero, which means this got misclassified. And then all ones right here. So in this example, I have one, two, three, four, five, six images of dogs and four images of cats. And two of these are misclassified, one cat and one dog. That's our story so far. How do I know how good is this, uh, you know, is this uh, feature? Well, if I use these features and classify, how good is that classification? Meaning, now that we have features, let's go ahead and fit that to a classifier. Well, deep learning is difficult to uh, explain right here, so let's just use a simple uh, logistic regression classifier. So let's take that data and let's separate our cats and dogs right there, the true labels, and then let's just fit this to a uh, uh, logistic regression. So we know that this feature that has minus 0.5 right here, this is an actual dog. So I'm placing it up here, and this one is an actual cat, this one, so I'm placing it down here. Yeah, and then this is our logistic regression fit, which means now on the y-axis I have probabilities. By the way, probability uh, going this way is basically dog and probability going the other way is cat, right? So for the cat, the axis is inverted. So let's look at the probabilities instead of just uh, the feature values because feature values, we don't care. We are using feature values to fit a model, which we did. And now let's look at the probability of each data point, right? We have a data point here, we have a data point here, and then here and so on. And these two are misclassification, this one and this one. But let's look at the probabilities. The probability of this being a cat is 1 minus 0.16. Well, if you look at the scale, it's 0 0.16 right there, which means 0 0.16 is the probability of that being a dog. But the true label is cat. So the probability of that being a cat is 1 minus dog, 1 minus 0 0.1. This is exactly where our second term in the previous equation comes in. 1 minus y multiplied by log of 1 minus y, right? So that's what that is. So for all cats, I'm just doing 1 minus because the scale goes from top to bottom, from top to bottom. And for all dogs, it's just whatever the probability because the scale is this way. So that's it. So now we have uh, our probabilities because this is logistic regression. You just look at your y-axis and okay, that's 0.41 and this value is 0.65 and all the way to about 0.9, which is we are very confident that that image belongs to a dog. Okay, now let's just look at the probabilities. And a true loss function penalizes bad decision. What is a loss function? It tells us how good our predictions are. If the predictions are good, the loss function value should be low. If the predictions are bad, the loss function should be high because what does our stochastic gradient descent or any of our optimizers do? Their job is to minimize the loss function, right? The job of an optimizer is to minimize the loss function. So we want the loss function to be small. That means 
a small loss function, you have a high probability. So a loss function penalizes bad decisions and negative log suits well for that. So if you look at this negative log of x, this is just a plain math plot of log, log of x, negative log of x. And if you just look at this, anything that is on this side where our probabilities are above 0 0.5, you have very good predictions, right? Anything above 0 0.5 means you have a good high enough uh, probability. That means the loss is low. And if the uh, uh, prediction is below like 0 0.4, 0 0.2, even approaching zero, then the loss is very high. So this is an excellent loss function. This is exactly why our, ent uh, our uh, cross entropy uses a log function. In fact, and sometimes it's referred to as log loss, not just cross entropy loss, but log loss. This is exactly the reason because we're using the log function to represent uh, to uh, this. So uh, from scikit-learn documentation, if you, look there, if you look at the log loss, the definition of log loss is uh, for binary, obviously, in this case. Y log P plus 1 minus Y log 1 minus P. So Y is basically the class label and P is the probability for that specific class label. So uh, uh, as, as I just mentioned, if the probability for the true class is 1, for example, if in, the, in this case, Oh, sorry. In this case, if this probability of being uh, this a dog equals to one, what happens to this equation? If that probability equals to one, then the loss equals to zero, right? That's exactly what this equation is saying. If my, what is log one? Log one is zero, right? So log one is zero and this term is zero. Similarly, right here. So this is dog, this is cat. That's pretty much it. Yeah, this is the other class. Now, why do we put a negative sign? Because this is a log of, what is the range of probabilities? It goes from zero to one, right? Zero, 0, 0.1 or whatever. So any log of values between zero to one is a negative number, as you probably know. So to convert that into a positive number, we just add a negative sign right there. That's pretty much it. So now you know where this loss actually comes from. The negative sign, because the quantity the magnitude, uh, sorry, the, the value that we calculate right here is negative. So we want to convert that to positive, a small positive number. So it gets minimized as the uh, training happens. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. So which means now let's take a look at our probabilities and plug that thing in. So what is this? Negative of y log p, right? So what is the first uh, uh, log, uh, log right there. So I'm, I'm ignoring this y because for our dogs, y is one. For our cat, y is zero. So one minus zero is one, one is one. So we are multiplying these just with one. So just ignore the y for now. Let's just look at log p and log one minus p. So first of all, this is uh, a cat, the first data point, which means one minus p, one minus 0.16. That's exactly what we're doing here, which is 0.84. So log 0.84 plus log of 1 minus 0.34, again, a cat. And then log of 0.41 right there, because that's a dog in reality. So that's the log. And you keep adding that, and then you get a value of 4.6 when you add all of these. And how many data points we have? 10. So the average loss is 0 0.46. So if you actually plug these values into a binary cross entropy uh, equation, then you would get a value of 0.46 as your binary cross entropy. So this is uh, the story behind uh, this is the story behind binary cross entropy. And if you are still curious, let's jump into our uh, you know a couple of lines of Python just to code this for, uh, you know a few lines. Okay, so here I got the same data. As you see, uh, my features are minus 1.8, minus 0 0.8, 0 0.5, and so on. These are exactly what I showed you earlier in the presentation, and my true values, true labels are 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and this is, again, we saw this earlier. So let's go ahead and run these lines. I am just defining what my features and uh, true values are. Now we need to fit that to logistic regression, which I just did uh, manually, like uh, with my hand painting, but now let's actually do it in the right way. So first of all, let's get the logistic regression from our scikit-learn package, and then uh, instantiate our model, and go ahead and fit that onto our features, Right? We are using our features to fit a logistic regression. So go ahead and fit those. Uh, I'm not even explaining reshaping and all that. You probably know that. And now using our logistic, now we did fit a model. Let's go ahead and predict it onto our features itself. 
So it should give us uh, the prediction probabilities using these features. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you look at our Ypred, these are all the probabilities of uh, uh, for our, uh, each of these. And this is exactly what I copied here. If you look at the presentation, if I go back uh, right there, you see 0 0.16, 0 0.34. This is exactly what I copied, right? 0 0.16, 0 0.34. So when you draw this logistic regression uh, curve or sigmoid curve, this is exactly what you see. So these are the probabilities. Now, based on this, now let's actually see uh, what our uh, what our uh, binary cross entropy is. So how do we do that? First of all, let's uh, import log from our math library. So let's do that. And this is the calculation that I just put on the screen earlier. This is basically this calculation right there. OK, so that's what we have here. And let us run these lines to see what the calculated value is going to be right there. So there you go. Our negative average of all the log probabilities is 0 0.4594. That's what we got when we uh, when we calculated this manually. Now let's actually import the library log loss from scikit-learn metrics and use that. And how do you calculate uh, binary cross entropy or log loss? It's basically your true values versus the predicted values, right? So this is very similar to calculating accuracy. So there you go, log loss. And then let's print what we get from this calculation, 0 0.4594. Exactly the same value here. Why should it be any different? I mean, in one case, we just did the hand calculation. Here, it's basically from a library. Exactly the same when you use TensorFlow Keras. So let's import TensorFlow. And the binary cross entropy is part of your Keras.losses, right? I mean, this is what we use to import our binary cross entropy. Let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> and now let's go ahead and calculate that for our Y true and Y pred. And when you do that, it gives you a tensor. Uh, now we need to convert that into a NumPy array or a value. That's why I'm doing that step right there. So let's go ahead and run that line and print out the value right here. It should be exactly the same. So here you have hand calculated values. Here you have scikit-learn value. And here you have the TensorFlow value. Obviously, they're all identical because the calculation is the same. It is negative log. OK, so I hope now you have a better understanding of binary cross entropy. And if you are looking for multi-class, think of that as just broken down into individual binary classifiers. This is exactly why you actually do uh, convert your data, multiple classes, into categorical. It's almost like you are saying, OK, I have five different classes, but then I'll give you individual class as a binary. That's exactly what uh, is happening over there. But in the back end, this is all cross entropy. And here we are breaking it down into two classes. In multiple, it is broken it down to how many ever classes you have there, uh, one at a time. OK, uh, I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. And like I mentioned earlier, like this video if you like it, and subscribe to the channel. And if you are feeling extra generous, just hit that button uh, that I showed you to purchase uh, stickers and so on. So thank you, guys. Please stay tuned, and I'll cover another topic uh, next time as part of our Python tips and tricks series, which I seriously hope you found to be useful. Thank you.